Hi, this is Mike Furches with Real People, Real Life coming at you today. Uh, I have a really kind of a special program uh, talking about movies and entertainment. It's kind of fun and enjoyable. I'm looking forward to it because I've got some friends that I've known for quite some time to be a part of that particular program. Starting off with uh, Del No. Del No, Ebby? Eby. Eby. Yep. So I, I did this with Leaf. We'll have Leaf. <laughs> I never, nobody ever asked me my last name either, and I get it wrong. I say, okay, that's fine, no problem. Dano's been involved in uh, television, movies for quite some time, and just tell us some about your involvement and what else, uh, what you've been a part of. Well, I have uh, been acting or been in the business since 1993. Started in theater, um, then went out to uh, California. Uh, used to split my time between here and there because I have I have a wife and a family here, um, and you know was did the, the, the background thing, you know, because I was trying to get into SAG. And then I got hired on for um, Disney's The Haunted Mansion uh, as a principal uh, dancer because the ballroom dancers and ghost dancers are, are integral to the to the actual Haunted Mansion and the story and all that good stuff. So that taft heart led me into a Screen Actors Guild and was going to go back to California. I came home for a visit, was going to go back to California and my wife got pregnant, and we had a, had a very special, uh, special young man, and so I've been back in this area ever since. But I've been able to keep busy with feature films in um, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, in Missouri. So it's, it's been nice. It's been busy. We're going to do a later segment in the program where we talk about the mechanics and the concepts of what it means to get into the business, and you know how all of that works. But I want to just talk some about uh, about yourself here. You started out in theater, and a lot of people don't realize there's a big difference in a lot of ways regarding moving from theater to film. Talk about some of the transitions that that was a part of that. Well, I mean, when I when I started theater, it was to um, you know get experience as as an actor and, and build a resume and stuff like that. And um, you know, I had a number of people telling me, well, the only difference between theater and film is in one you, you talk louder. <laughs> well, the more I got into it, I, I found out that there was a whole host full of, of, yeah. of things that are different. Um, so, I mean, with, with, with theater, you have, the broad, you have the broad canvas, you know, and, and, and you can paint on that broad canvas, you know, as much as, as the director will let you. And on, with film, it's a much smaller, condensed, yeah. Canvas and you can't be as big and bold and loud and stuff uh, on camera because it just comes across as a crazy person. Yeah, and it's a lot more repetitive as well. It is repetitive. I mean, you know, when you're doing theater, it's it's um, you know you have tech week and, yeah. and and you start running the whole thing from beginning, middle to end. Where film and television, you know, you may start in the middle. You know, uh, on day one, and then the next day you're shooting the beginning of it, and then the next day you, you're shooting the middle again, and then the next day you're shooting the end of it. And they, so it's just it's all about playing moments instead of through, you know playing that through line of a character. So uh, we have other guests in the room, and as uh, as we go into the last two segments, anything that we talk about here that you want to chime in on, so remember that's when we get into the last two segments. One of the things as well that I you know I've done a little bit of theater. Took an acting class with you mm -hmm. a while back, and there's a young little lady out there that, that I know that you've worked with, and Leif, our guest, is going to be a little bit later on, mm -hmm. worked with as well. Uh, so, um, are you still teaching acting classes and that type of thing? I am, I am. I teach uh, privately, and, and you know, I've got about four or five students that I teach. Um, I don't actively advertise it, so it's yeah. pretty word of mouth and, and stuff like that because I work around their schedule and, and everything, but you know, all of them. Are wanting to make this a career, which is nice. Yeah, I saw a big uh, on one of the young ladies. I saw a big spill on one of the television networks as well as the newspaper. Tell us about because I was actually in the class with her. Yeah, I know. And, I know. You know it's, big, it's, you pumped her up, and she's <laughs> she's out in Hollywood I'm now. I'm telling you what. Yeah. I'm what happened? To get jealous, man. I'm telling you. But, <laughs> Tell uh, us about her. Well, you know, she's she's um, uh, well, first of all, her name's Raylan Caster, and she. Um, uh, I took some of her first headshots, and, and I've known her since she was a little tiny girl. And uh, you know, now she's out there and, and living the dream and, yeah. and making things happen. And, and her dad, she had a great support uh, system, and uh, with her dad, Kurt, and her mother Teresa. So, you know, I'm not surprised that she's uh, yeah. she's not that she's she's going on up the ladder. So I keep in touch with Kurt and Teresa on Facebook as well, and. Uh, 
it, there's and we see all these things that happen with child actors and so forth but to have that good support system there is critical especially for child actors and Oh, yeah. uh, it's amazing. You know, child actors come from Wichita, Kansas. You know, oh, among other places, and so it's great. Yeah, the uh, one thing's as well. You've uh, you've been in a, quite a few movies as a principal, mm -hmm. uh, and and you've been in, in as extras. Tell some of the work. I mean, you've a couple of them that we were talking about earlier. One of them I'm I'm waiting to hopefully see get some distribution because mm -hmm. I've had some friends tell me it's like my initial response is I don't know if I want to see it or not. You know. I, they said, no, man, it's, it's actually not a bad movie. It's kind of got a good storyline. Stephen and Jaden Howe were telling me that they, they actually thought it came off better mm -hmm. and uh, then they thought it was going to as well. Tell us some uh, about some of the other work you've done, though. Well, I've done um, some of the things that, I mean, people might have heard of um, that I was just background, some of people. Huh. But it was cool when I But every when director I was says it, there are know. no small parts. <laughs> well, yes, there are. But, hey, I'll take them. So, yeah. um was uh, a man apart with Vin Diesel. Um, you know, I got to film two days on the back of Universal yeah. Studios. You know, and and I remember the summer before that, my wife had come out to visit, and um, we were taking the tour of Universal Studios. And so here, a year later, I was actually yeah. working on the back lot, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Um, and then uh, Intolerable Cruelty, where you know, I. Again, I was I was in a feature. I was featured in a scene with George Clooney, and that was, you know, it's just all these people you watched and and, and stuff, and, and they're there right in front of you. So like, wow, that's pretty cool. Now it's 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 cool, but it's not quite doesn't have quite have the same effect as it used to have. So, um, and then when I came, when I knew I was going to be back here for a while, I, I done things like uh, Ambrose Bierce Civil War stories, which um, didn't play TBS? on television. It, well, it it, it it was supposed to supposed to play on PBS, but um, for some reason with the with distribution and stuff like that, it didn't um, went straight to video. I think they moved well over, you know, 100 or 200,000 units, which is copies of it. Uh -huh. um, and I know it's in schools in, all over the United States and in and, and Europe. I actually saw the German uh -huh. German um, DVD. So cover, it was a subtitle? Was it subtitled so, or dubbed? <coughs> it was just uh, Civil War. And, okay. and, and But I'm on the... I'm, Front and center on the on okay. the on the DVD cover, which I thought that was cool, but I stumbled upon that on on the internet. Yeah. So um, you know, I've just done you know this and that uh, here locally. I, I, you travel more than I travel more than I do uh, actually film here. So. One of the things I think happens, that I see it happening in the music business as well. There's oftentimes these grandiose ideas <laughs> that I'm going to do what I want, how I want, when I want, etc., etc., etc. To mm -hmm. to, to kind of play off the king and I uh, but that whether I'm writing or music uh, there's always a producer or an engineer in theater and movies there's always a director in movies there's editors mm -hmm. and I mean so it's very possible that in a lot of situations you do a ton of work and it's left on the cutting room floor well, yeah, and you have to you have to seriously be open to the direction that you may or may not always agree with. You know, if you're a George Clooney, I'm sure you can argue with the director. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're the star of the show, you can. You have a lot more. Um, you have a, a lot more clout to be able to, to get things done, or, yeah. or you know, if you want to, re you didn't feel right about a scene, you you can. A lot of times, talk to the director into shoot reshooting it. Um, when you're not that, you know, you don't you don't have that luxury. It's, um, but you know, one of the things that I had to do is is. My priority was acting, but when I knew I was going to be back here for a long time, I had to learn how to do a bunch of other things. I had to learn how to do a lot of crewing and, and, and crew stuff that I really never had an interest in doing before, but it's kind of you learn, you branch out and learn, or you find something else to do. Yeah. So. Another thing, I, uh, as I think about this, when you're when you're doing your material, when you're doing your presentation and so forth, mm. a lot of times you'll run into different styles of a director. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe your acting style, or what type of direction did you respond to best, or have you responded to? I, best? I mean, I like th there 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 are technical directors, um, and then there are actors directors. Uh, most of the time, actors directors are were actors at some point, um, and decided that that directing was was more suited to them. So and they know how to to talk to, to actors and, 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 and get what they want out of them. <coughs> Some directors will um, 
you know, basically walk you through it and tell you every, everything that they want you to do, yeah. which is very, to, for me as an actor, is very stifling. You know, because I don't feel like I have the room to actually create and 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 basically do what you hired me to do. You know, and so when I'm directing, I try to be I try to be the director that I want. So I try to let the actors do as much as you give them the freedom of development as possible. Yeah. I remember in the uh, taking some direction from you in the acting class I took with you that you really were very. Uh, very direct and the actor being themselves because if you remember I was concerned about my accent do I mm -hmm. change my accent do I do this you said no 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 just you know take on this character but be yourself in doing it mm -hmm. so I mean that's, that's kind of what I hear you saying as far as when when you're doing stuff the type of directors that you would want right? well I mean as actors I mean the, the only truth that we have to start with is 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 from ourselves how how would we react in that situation and then you start building everything else around that yeah Another question, you, you touched on this, again, it's my experience and I've seen, I see a lot of people that go into the business, again, whether it be music, radio, television, but specifically more so movies and television and even music, that they, uh, how can I say it, they don't do what they need to do from a professional perspective. And you've talked about, I know you do headshots for individuals as well. Mm -hmm. Those are the types of things that the actor, someone seeking to work in this business, they need to do mm -hmm. and spend the money up front to make it right. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to have the that's the tools of the business. I mean, the the headshot is your is your business card, is your calling card, and you know, and it's being on on websites and and stuff like that that pertain to your business and and constantly learning and growing. So okay, we'll have you back for two more segments okay. here later on. We're going to talk about more of this stuff because with our other guests. Again, this is Mike Furtis, Dano Evie here. You're watching Real People, Real Life, and we'll be be back with you in just a second. <laughs> 